guys, it's Patrice Curry from Basketball Wives LA, and you're watching Instant Reaction TV with Knife and Fresh. Hello everybody, welcome to Instant Reaction TV, where things get instant. I'm your host, Knife and Fresh, and thanks for tuning into today's show. What's your instant reaction? Today we're here with the glamorous, classy, fabulous, gorgeous Patrice from Basketball Wives LA on VH1. Holla! Hey gorgeous! Hi, how you doing, Knife and I'm doing good. How are you? I'm blessed. That's that's excellent. Now I see all this. You look fabulous, by the way. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. I see all this work behind you. What, did you make that? I did. This is some of the, uh, this is my art room. This is where I hide my stuff away from my kids. So. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> well, that's nice. You're, I see you got some artistic skill. I do a little bit. I do. Okay. And how I, long have you been painting? You know what? I just started painting probably last year. Last year? Mm-hmm. Are you serious? Yeah. And you're this good already? Like, did you have practice when you were younger? I mean, I always like art. So, you know, I like to just create things and I work on it and make it be what I want it to be. Okay, well, that's excellent. Now, why don't you tell us about yourself, your horoscope, where you come from, where you were born and raised? Okay, well, I'm a Pisces and okay. I am from, I was born in Evanston. My parents um, came from Belize, which is in Central America, about oh, a wow. year and a half before I was born. Okay. So my older sister was born in Belize, and my younger sister and I were born in Illinois. Oh, wow. So, Miss Patrice, now I noticed on the show you said you've, you and your husband have seven kids collectively. So, what, like, can you deliberate on that a little bit more? What do you mean collectively? Collectively means... <laughs> Between the two of us, we have seven kids. Um, I have four for him. They're my biological kids. And then we've been raising my little sister, um, who's now 19. And then Eddie had a son before he and I met, who's now 13. And then um, there's his son that he had while he was, you know, doing his thing. Um, while we were together. So there are seven. Um, there's, you know, their ages spread across the board. You know, my, our youngest is five now. Okay. And my little sister is 19. So they're all mixed in there. Yeah, a lot of different ages. A lot yeah. of different ages. Now, I know on the show, you said that you were thinking about adopting a certain, I think his name is Noah. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I noticed on the show you said you were thinking about adopting. So, can you deliberate on that maybe a little bit more? Um, well, you'll see more on the show about that. But, you know, essentially, he is not my biological kid. You know, I'm right. raising him like he's one of my kids. Um, I treat him like he's one of my children. Okay. But um, certain things I can't do for him like... I can for my own kids because my name's not on his birth certificate. Right. So if it's time to go get, um, like I, I, I want to get my kids into acting now that we're here and I was looking into getting, um, work permits for them. Okay. Well, I couldn't get a work permit for Noah because my name's not on his birth certificate. So I could only get the work permits for my kids and then my husband had to do, you know, had to go out and do it for Noah. And stuff like that, like, bothers me because um, I don't like that divide. Okay. Uh, yeah. I know that, you know, things are how they are. And when I accepted him into my heart and into my life, you know, I, I did that completely. And it wasn't overnight. I didn't make a decision like, oh, yeah, you had a baby behind my back. Like, of course I want to raise him. It wasn't like that at so all. Does he, live, does he live with you? He does. Okay, okay. So he does live with you. Mm -hmm. So do you mind if I ask where his biological mom is? She's deceased. 
Oh, okay. I'm so sorry. Okay. I'm so sorry to hear that. So that's how, you know, he came to be one of our kids. Okay. And I definitely think that's a very important step. Like I said, I adore you for doing that. And I feel like God will reward you for doing that because it takes a really big heart to want to raise a kid that's not yours, you know, especially mm -hmm. the way it all came about. So I take that you're a woman with a nice heart and that's very important. Thank you. Now, Miss Patrice, now you and your husband, you guys look very happy on the show. You guys have a beautiful family, especially playing football and everything. I see you and your husband are very happy together. Now, where did you and your husband meet? Where did, how long have you guys known each other? I met him in 2001, um, shortly after my mother passed. Okay. So um, we started dating in 02, and we both were probably too young to be dating each other. But, um, you know, we had to learn a lot along the way. We've, we've gone through a lot being with each other, apart from each other, just growing. Um, right. And uh, we got married in 05. Okay. And okay. Uh, yes, I had two kids before we got married. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we did it the wrong way, but you know, we, we worked it out. So, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you kids, guys are still together. Yeah, and, and that's, the, that's the best part about it. Um, right. Is that we're able to still love each other despite our flaws and work through it. I mean, we still got a lot we're working through. You know, it is what it <laughs> uh -huh. is, like, you know, but it doesn't change our love and, you know, our fight. Right, and I love that. You know, you have a lot of people who marry at a young age, and they only last for about two years, and you guys have been married since 2005, so you guys are going 10 years strong. Yeah, I mean, it's been a rocky road, so, uh -huh. like, don't get me wrong. There's plenty of times where I was like, you know what, I can't do this no more. But, right. Um, you know, it's gotten, we've gotten through it. You know, we, we've had to do a lot to get through it. You know, I definitely think that when you go, when you're married and you have like battles and everything and you have trials, I feel like that's what makes a relationship stronger because you guys know how to get through it. You know, some people, some people don't want to fight for it. Exactly. You know? uh, I mean, there were times where I didn't want to fight. Uh-huh. Now, where did you guys have your honeymoon? Um, we got married in Cabo, Mexico. Oh, Cabo, Mexico. Mm -hmm. Oh, so nice. We just stayed there and hung out. Now, how, how long did you guys stay there? Uh, we were probably there a week or a week. Okay. Like that. When you're gone <laughs> for too long, you know, got, kind of gets a monotonous. It's like, okay, I'm ready to go home. <laughs> exactly. So, what kind of food did did you guys eat? What was your favorite memory from um, Cabo, Mexico? My favorite memory, I don't drink, right? Uh huh. I don't really drink alcohol much because it tastes nasty to me. But I was so slapped <laughs> that trip. I mean, everybody was. We Even the wedding day, like, I, I probably didn't really, I don't think I ate the day. You know, I was so busy right. getting ready. And <laughs> by the time it was time for the reception, man, I was gone. <laughs> I had fun, though. We had a lot of fun. We, it was just, it was an intimate thing. We had about um, 120 people there, family. Um, it was most of his people because I'm, I'm cheap. So I'm over here <laughs> like, oh, no, no, that's too many people. Let's just do, it was supposed to be 20 and 20. And he just, you know. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it was a, I'm pretty sure it was a happy memory. You guys have a lot of pictures together. It was beautiful. It was, it was a beautiful wedding. I had a good time. I really did. Okay, perfect. I'm happy to hear that. Okay, so um, in 2001, I lost my mother to HIV. Um, she contracted it from her fiancé who died four years before her. That is a long, deep story to get into, so I won't. I want to be on here crying because right. it still okay. you know, affects me. But, um, I, you know, I, I started writing again because of that. Um, I used to write poetry and stuff as I was younger, and I don't know, life was kind of hardened in my heart, and I just kind of stopped doing that. Just the things that I was, the decisions I was making and what I was putting myself through. My mom died a month after I graduated college, so I was hit with a lot of stuff at one time. But, um, yeah, I started writing a book. After a while, nobody really understood why I wanted to do it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, you know, it just 
I just looks like I can't look. I, I can't worry about what everybody thinks. I just got to do what I got to do for right. me. Right. Um, and you know, fast forward to today, I still do a lot of writing. Um, my husband and I are working on a book together. Um, it, it's it's gonna be a wild book, but you know, it's uh-huh. essentially it's a love story that just okay. you know shares a journey of how love can heal you and make you a better person. Books and all of the books only dealt with animals and it was for me I'm like how do I help this child when everything is about friggin dinosaurs or bunny rabbits like that's not you know at four and a half you can't relate that to real life you have to have better examples so that's what my book deals with um let me see can you see this yeah I can see it perfectly look at this is the book that Miss Patrice Curry published herself Okay, so I, I did this book, short stories, it's um, 10 short stories, different experiences of ways children have lost a loved one, and um, I kind of put my book on the shelf, because I, I published it in 08, and it was the end of 08, it was about October, uh-huh. and I was waiting on my illustrations to be completed so that I could put it, you know, press it and finish it. Right. And um, and then you know my my husband's tragedy took place. You know where um, you know this is how we ended up raising Noah. Me taking in his son as my own. Right. Okay. So when when that took place, you know when they were murdered, I put my book down because one of the stories in my book dealt directly with domestic violence and. A father killing a mother, leaving a child, you know, to be by themselves. And it kind of, it was too soon for me to just put my book out. They, they were murdered in January. Okay. You know, it just, the, the reception wasn't well. Because people kind of felt like I was, I wrote this book because of them. Where it really had nothing to do with the situation and everything to do with what I had experienced in right. my lifetime. And... So now, you know, I'm, I'm ready. I think that wounds have healed enough that I can show my book to the world and share it with some children who need this type of help. Okay, and I like that. So you published that. When did you publish that book? 2008. 2008. Okay, and I like it. There's a lot of, there's a lot of different, you know, stories behind it. And I feel like it has a lot of truth behind it. It has a meaning to it. And I like yeah. that. Now, what, what did you say the name of the book was? It's uh, short stories of children coping with death. Okay. Um, so it's, you know, it's, it's a kid's book. It's right. very um, pretty, you know, like I have cute little illustrations in here. Okay. Um, That's nice. Uh, it's, it's a consolidated version from where it started because I had to pick a group, an age group. And... Um, I felt that kids that were at my little sister's age when it took when when my mother passed um, would be able to benefit most from it. Okay. Uh, in the future, I'll, I plan to write a longer one so that right. you know, older kids can use it. And I'm um, actually I just got finished talking to someone yesterday about making a Spanish version so that you know my Latino friends and family can have a version because you know death affects all of us. You know we're all. There ain't no way around it. So, right, exactly. You know, so, the more people I can reach, the better. Right. So now, is there? Did you say is there a place we can find your book? Like online? Is it? You know. It's not online. Okay. I, I'm literally just deciding it's time for me to get this going again. It is. Uh, so right now, you can contact me uh, via uh, my booking information, bookpatricecurry at gmail dot com. Okay. And, the book is uh, $14. Anybody that wants to purchase the book, $14 plus there's shipping. You know, I'm more than happy to send an invoice and mail a book out. Mm-hmm. Um, soon enough, I'll be doing book signings and getting it going. You know, I really want to work on that side of my life. Right. I, I've been at home mom for a long time, and now I just want to let all my dreams come to fruition. So right, and I think this is something that they should definitely capture on the show. Because it has meaning to it, it's very touchy, you know? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I like I don't have creative control, you know? Right, exactly. <laughs> so. Okay, yeah. Well, that's excellent, and I definitely appreciate you sharing your books. That's very important. 
Thank you. Is there anything else you want to, you know, tell your fans or anything about your books or anything like that? Um, well, you know, as you guys are watching, you'll see me in some different things. Like some of the clothes that I wear while I'm filming, I make. Um, I like to look different. So, you know, I sew. I, I taught myself how to sew. Um, I paint. Um I do a lot of things. Do you have any of the? Do you want to show any of your claws, or maybe that's too much? Uh, it's not gonna look right me holding it up like. But you know, you know, like that the blue outfit that I wore. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. I made that. Um, oh. I didn't make the blazer, but I made the tube top and the skirt, the pencil skirt. Yeah. Um, I made this that I'm wearing right now. Um, you know, I, I make simple. Th uh, you'll see. They'll be throughout the season. There'll be more. It'll be a time. Well, I don't even know if they'll show it. Maybe I need to start just saying, I made that. You know, right, so. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I'm making clothes to mass produce for other people because I don't have that kind of time. Now, if I can design and then have a team behind me that's, you know, that wants to, I'll do that. But uh -huh. um, I tried the whole sewing and selling, and it's just too much work. Well, Miss Patrice, it's been my pleasure. And until next time. Thank you.